And we are live. Welcome to the Turaco Creative Cast. I am Frank Sarasar, a.k.a. Captain Goggles. This is my co-host, Anna Rob, a.k.a. Mask Woman. And we have a special guest tonight, Orlando Salinas. And before we get into uh, who he is, uh, you know, if you're watching this on the replay, if you like, uh, if you like this content, uh, subscribe. Uh, give us a like, and hopefully some people will start uh, pop uh, popping up. But we're just gonna go on with the show. And uh, right now, I'm I just finished doing a mini comic, so I'm just working on uh, making that uh, digital into a PDF. I've already made uh, copies of the actual comic that I'll be uh, I've been handing out, giving out. So, is that the one you gave me, Frank? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I have a printed copy here. Yeah. Yeah, this is a Captain Goggles and Mask Woman. So <laughs> cool. And uh, Anna, can you tell us a little bit what you're doing. Hi, I am Mask Woman, aka Anna Rob. And today we have our special guest, Orlando. I guess this direction. Who is he? Yeah. Well, Orlando, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what you're about? Well, that's a pretty broad question. <laughs> so, yes, it is. Well, this is Orlando, and I am a business owner, entrepreneur, um, speaker, uh, evangelist, and the CEO and founder of the Choose to Change Foundation, right here. Mm -hmm. Choose Foundation. We are a 501c3 nun profit organization, Christian-based organization, and I help, um, I, my goal or my mission, our mission is to inspire, challenge, and equip men uh, to become better fathers, husbands, and leaders in our community. And um, I have a mentoring class on a weekly basis in our church. Um, I built, uh, I'm a business owner, like I said, I have a very um, successful remodeling kitchen business where I focus or specialize on kitchens and bathrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, people love remodeling their kitchens and bathrooms. So you can even go to my website, um, check it out. I think I'll, I'll give it out to you, cqrkitchenandbath.com. Okay. And um, like my pages. <laughs> Uh, but that's what I do. I, I, I love helping. I love helping people. Uh, I'm a mentor to a lot of men, and really, my my goal or my purpose in life is to help as many people as I can uh, succeed in life, and whether to be a better father, a better husband, a better leader, a better mother, a better leader or business owner, and that's that's my goal. Um, and the second thing is that um, the reason I want to do that is because there's a lot of people that don't that have a hard time believing in themselves, believing that they can achieve, believing that they can move forward in life. A lot of people like that. And, that, that, and it's just in the mind. That that's just not true. Because if a man like me can do it, um, and I'm, uh, anybody can, and the reason I told you all the good stuff first is because what I have accomplished is not is – not, that's really not the what's the word I'm looking for. Mm, I, I didn't tell you that to impress you. I, mm -hmm. I tell people that to impress upon them that anybody can not only change their life but have success uh, if they choose to because that's what I did. And I'd be happy to tell you my story if you'd like. Sure. Right, that sounds. That sounds great. And uh, anyone watching this, uh, I just want to tell you, uh, Orlando Salinas is, a, like you say, he's a mentor, but he's also uh, my mentor. And uh, so actually I met him, I think, five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so well, you tell us that part first, uh, Frank. And sure. Yeah, and I can, I can tell, tell that part. And then I'll uh, share, right. 
share, share my story, and I'll be happy to share. All right, sounds cool. Uh, so I think so I think it was about uh, let's see, June eleventh. At, at least six years ago. For yeah, sure. I was in two thousand fifteen, June eleventh, two thousand fifteen. Wow. Um, that was when, like, around that time, um, and I haven't like uh, said this. I don't think I've said this on on the show, but I uh, I've told Anna oh. about this in some of, some of my <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that um, my my wife had had just left me, so I was like, I I already hit rock bottom. I wanted to give give up. I wanted to quit, and I was even thinking about uh, getting myself uh, checked into a mental institution. Uh, but around like a uh, that day, uh, June eleventh, it was a Thursday. But in my mind, I was thinking that it was Wednesday, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, I was thinking I need to go back to God, I need to go back to church. And there used to be a, a church here nearby um, that I used to go to. So I looked it up and and it was still up. It was still active and and like, oh yeah, like uh, they have services on Wednesday. So I, I found a ride, I found a way to get there. I show up and it says, and it's closed because I, I realized like, Oh, it's not Wednesday. It's actually Thursday, so there's no no service. And I was about to leave, and some guy pulled up and says, "Hey, well, we got something going on right now." And I, that's when I walked in, and uh, I met Orlando, and they had to choose to change mentoring program. Uh, and like right off, like I was telling Orlando a little bit about me and uh, like stuff that uh, that was going on, and you know, he's like, "Oh, okay, like a." Uh, you know, stick around and, uh, you know, from, from there on, like what, what he was saying, like he actually challenged me and he did this, uh, uh, this illustration that, that, that he does. Um, and I'll, I'll let him, uh, uh, talk about, about it, but it's called, uh, uh, walking the plank. So after that, like Orlando was like, well, I mean, you know, just like, you're, you're, you're kind of crazy, but you know, <laughs> keep coming. Uh, and if I, now that's what I've been doing, you know, so every day was a process and, and just asking Orlando questions and like he had a, a, uh, a mentoring challenge. It's like, all right, I'm going to take a, uh, take that up. And, uh, and, uh, you know, like every day trying to uh, improve myself, improve my life. And like just with a lot of stuff that uh, Orlando teaches and, and uh, talks about, and he doesn't just talk about it. He, he doesn't like talk the talk. He walks the walk. So like, and uh, uh, so, like you know, uh, since I've been here, like and and I just doing the show, doing the uh, my art, doing the uh, my comics, all that. Like I owe that to to Orlando, just like encouraging me and and you know, you know, pushing me to to keep keep doing it, not give up. And you know, and you know, as he says all the time, you know, it's a process, so it's not gonna happen right away. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that that's uh that's my my story of how I met Orlando in in a nutshell. <laughs> in a nutshell, yeah. I'm just trying to get better writing, guys. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Got to put you at the right time at the right place to meet the right people to get you on the right path. Yeah, that's right. That's 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 yeah. yep. <laughs> at the right place at the right time. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That doesn't know. Yeah, but that's oh, how yeah. you learn. You learn how you don't learn how it's gonna happen, but it'll happen. Even uh, just doing this show and meeting Anna and people like her, like uh, uh, the, after like the whole pandemic happened, I was like, well, I'm, you know, I want to work on comics, so I found a Discord group, uh, and uh, in there, like they're talking about making comics and like doing a story, like doing a book where uh, you can get your story in there. So like, all right, I'll try it. And in there, I, uh, that's where I met Anna and which we had been talking and uh, I'm not sure like how long, but like we like, 
I decided to do a little show like this, and then I invite her and someone else on, and she stuck around. So we just did our, we just started doing this show like for, uh, I think for a few months now. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly when we started, but it's been a while. But it's, uh, timing, everything just kind of lining up, and like. There's there's. There's this um, analogy that I use, or that's it's true. You know, as you've been preparing yourself to, you know, opportunity comes. And mm -hmm. that's what that's that's what that's what some people call luck, mm -hmm. where preparation meets opportunity. And yeah. uh, and that's what I that's what I always tell people and preach and teach and you know you you have to be in the process of going somewhere. And then opportunity comes. You can't wait for opportunity because you're not prepared. You have to be preparing for opportunity. It's a good way to put it. True. Well, that's that's how it works. Because mm -hmm. an opportunity comes and it will. That that's the, that's it will. Once that's just that idea alone, understanding yeah. that, that opportunity will come. The problem is, and it comes to everyone. The problem is most people are not. Mm -hmm. Because they've yeah. been working on themselves, on their art, on their uh, skills, on their uh, talents, they just not working on it because they don't have nothing. They don't have like what you guys are doing. This is why I like what Frank is doing because he's working on something that he likes, that he enjoys, and he's getting better at it. And I told him one day an opportunity is going to come in your area, and you're going to be able to go to the next level like he's doing now. And it's that's just how it works, you know. There's mm -hmm. you pursue something um, by who you become, and um, mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, uh, um, as you go about what you guys are doing in your art, right? You still mm -hmm. live on another life. You still have to do things. You still have to like you talking about Anna, right? Uh, farming. Mm -hmm. and and so forth, but you like your art and you're working at it. You're working at it. You're working at it, right? Well, you still have to move forward. So just moving forward in life, one day another opportunity is going to arise for your for your talents, for your art. And you're gonna and you're gonna be right there. Hey, I've been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. In any case, that and that's mm. been the case for me. Uh, you know, starting. Um, um, my life, uh, I I started moving forward, just doing the next right thing, and um, things just start getting better and better and better. Oh, nice! That's awesome. And uh, as you're talking about oppor opportunity, the opportunity came came along because I wanted to make comics and I wanted to make comics. So I'm in these three books now, <laughs> and Anna is in this one. Mm -hmm. huh? So, uh, yeah, That's and awesome. I, I gave I gave her. I think you I gave you all three copies, right, Orlando? So you what? have uh, somewhere <laughs> over there. All right. So, if you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself, what what you do, your 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 testimony. Well, um, again, with the reason I told you the good news. Or the good stuff is because the good stuff is that you know I live a, a great life today. I, I I'm a very successful entrepreneur. I'm very content where I'm at, and mm. and I want to keep helping people, keep teaching people, uh, keep inspiring people, and challenging and equipping people, especially men, because I believe we desperately need men in our society um, to become to be. The, the fathers and husbands and leaders that we're supposed to be. Uh, that's what I believe. And uh, um, because I had failed as a father, I had failed as a husband, I had failed as a leader. And and, uh, and, and when I talk about leader, I mean like my family, leading my family. And um, because um, I had messed up my life at a very young age. So I'll give you a quick uh, uh, to, share, 
with you very quickly um, because I'm also a speaker, an international speaker. I'm, I'll be in Little Rock, Arkansas on January the 23rd and 24th. Over there was um, in, a, in a church and doing a believing in the impossible event, uh, sharing my story, and then uh, I'll be speaking at the church on Sunday. This is Saturday, January the 23rd, I'll be in Little Rock uh, doing a dead man walking, believing in the impossible event, which is sharing my story. And then Sunday, I'll be doing the church services uh, morning and evening at that church service. Oh. So let me tell you how that how that works and how how that how I how I got there. It all started when I was uh, about 17 years old. I got myself in a mess. By the time I was 17 years old, I was on my way to prison. And uh, I went to prison for uh, burglary of a building, burglary of a habitation, escape, aggravated robbery, murder. Uh, at, at the age of 17, I was tried and convicted for, uh, for murder. And um, they, they gave me 20 years, and I went to prison. And in the state of Texas, you do a, a certain amount of time. I did six and a half years, and I was released on parole. So from the age of 17 to the age of 24, I was in prison. And I got out when I, I got out. Uh, I, I became a Christian in prison, but uh, you know, uh, believing in God uh, doesn't necessarily stop you from messing up your life. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, in any case, uh, but I got out of prison at the age of 24, and things actually got worse. Uh, within three months of my release, I put a needle in my arm full of cocaine. I became a, a IV user, a cocaine addict. I put a needle in my arm, and and I, I instantly I became a, a, a drug addict. Um, I started stealing and robbing and cheating. Um, uh, drugs took control of my life. I was a hard worker. I would work, but I would always work. I was a, all I can think of is party, 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 drugs, drugs, drugs. I got married at the age of twenty six to a young lady. She had no idea what she was getting herself into. By the time I was 28 years old, I got shot at nine times. By the age of 33 years old, I was so drug addicted, so out of control. I was what I call a loser father, loser husband, uh, loser uh, leader, uh, just uh, drug addict, that at the age of 33 years old was my daughter that was six months old and my daughter, other daughter that was four years old which will be January 18th is her birthday. On January 18th, 1997, I did the unthinkable. And at six o'clock in the morning on my daughter's fourth birthday, I robbed a store again at the age of 33 years old. And that's when my whole world came crumbling down on me. And it was just a devastating time for my life, my wife, my children, uh, and my family. And... I remember I just just wanted to kill my worthless self because I was no good. I was a loser. I was I was a drug addict. I was um, there was no hope. I remember calling my wife on the phone, and this is I share this story all the time because that's the day that there was a pivoting point for me. Um, that um, I remember I called my wife at five o'clock that afternoon from the county jail, and I. Uh, and I told her, it's, it's my daughter's birthday, January 18th. And I'm in the county jail. And I knew she was having a birthday party. So at 5 o'clock that afternoon, I called. I said, babe, I'm not coming home no more. I really messed up this time. They're going to send me to prison for the rest of my life. And the next thing I hear is this little voice that said, daddy, daddy, today was my birthday. And you weren't here. Are you coming now? And, you know, I remember that like it was yesterday. Because that day, this broke me in a way that I just, I remember being in that county jail with the phone. I just, I remember just dropping to my knees and just crying out to God saying, what have I done? What have I done? You know, I had, I, I had lost everything. I, my, my family, uh, I had no money. I had no, I was a drug addict. I was on my way to prison for the rest of my life. And there was nothing I could do. I was hopeless and I had to make a choice. I literally had to make a choice because and that's why I, when I 
meet men like Frank when he they, he, he feels like ending his life and he don't want to, you know, I know what hopelessness feels like. I know what it feels like. You know, just wanting to kill your worthless self. I know what that feels like. And it and it's so it just would have been so much easier to do that. But because I knew about Jesus, I knew about God, I knew that this miracle worker, I heard about this miracle worker, you know, and and you know, I'd heard about a lot of religions, a lot of magicians, a lot of uh, all kinds of but Jesus was a miracle worker. That's what I remember. And but that's hard to believe when you're in a situation like this. <laughs> so that's why I tell people I chose to believe in the impossible. This is why I call my group Believing in the Impossible. Because I literally chose to believe. In, I said, God, if you're truly really that miracle worker that that Bible talks about, that that red ink talks about, that that, that you you lifted the, uh, open the blind's eye, make the lame walk, that you parted the red seed that you if you that's true then you can help me and you know i remember giving my life to god and i remember going in front of the judge who wanted to send me to prison for the rest of my life and she said uh that it was going to be very difficult for us to convince her for to get me a minimum sentence because my attorney wanted was asking the court to give me a minimum sentence and and i remember being in, in front of the court the uh, the judge and she's saying, Mr. Salinas, you're on parole. You went to prison for murder, aggravated robbery, burglary. She just read my whole record and she said, "You want me to give you a minimum sentence? Are you crazy?" She says it's going to be very difficult for you to convince me to even come close to a minimum sentence. And uh, that's what I was facing 22 years ago on my daughter's fourth birthday. But I. I, I chose to believe in the impossible. But my wife and I, she did the same, gave her life to Jesus Christ. And uh, we started fighting my case. A year later, I walked into that courtroom. And here's what that judge said. She said, Mr. Salinas, I don't know why I'm going to do this. She says, but I am going to sentence you to six and a half years in prison. And... You know, six and a half years to someone like you, maybe, Anna, may say, oh, my God, that's a lot of time. No, you don't understand. <laughs> I was thinking that was a short amount of time. That is a very short amount of time. Very short. For a criminal, uh, for a career criminal like myself that I was, for a judge to give me a six and a half year sentence, some people call that luck. I call that a miracle. And I took my miracle. And I said, this is why I, I, I use the term, I'm, I'm going to change my life. I didn't know how, Anna. I didn't know when. I didn't know where to start. I didn't have a clue. But here's what I did know. That I was going to change my life. And I didn't care who I had to kill. <laughs> That's why I tell people. <laughs> and Anna, guess who I had to kill? Well, guess. Yourself? It's not rocket science. Most people know. They, That's it. That's it. That's exactly it. Because that's our biggest obstacle for everyone is the man in the mirror. And I remember going back to prison and I, and I said, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to change my life. And and I started believing. I started going to church. I started reading my Bible. I started reading in a prison library. I tell people my life change started in a prison library. I remember I wanted to go to 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 college. I said, well, I'll go to prison and educate myself, right? But there was no college available for me. And so what I did is I started reading. I literally started reading and really revolutionized my life. I never, um, I, and this is what I teach today. You know, um, reading, uh, I remember picking up a book that opened my mind for the first time. That anybody could change their life. Anybody. It didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter where you started. It didn't matter that anybody could change your life. And they gave all these examples. And, and I started believing this. And I started realizing or understanding what the Bible, Jesus said in the Bible. He said, all things are possible if you believe. And it started making sense to me. It was like God was showing me little by little that there is hope, but it's up to me, not up to him. It's up to me. It's up to you. It's up to whoever wants it. 
that's how change works. And I started reading about how to be a better father, how to be a better husband. I started reading. I learned two words. I learned these two words, personal development, personal development, personal mm -hmm. growth, personal responsibility. <laughs> I started learning these things and started realizing that I uh, started learning things like if it's to be, it's up to me. And I started learning that it was, it wasn't, it wasn't more faith that I needed. What I needed was more wisdom. And that's exactly what I got. And at, at, and I walked out of prison at the age, I, I, I decided I was going to start my a business when I got out of prison. So I started reading books on business. And I should, I, let me share this quick little story. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, mm -hmm. but I started look, looking for books in about business. And I remember finding this book in the prison library. Remember, I'm in prison doing all this. And I went to the library and this little orange book caught my attention. It said something about entrepreneurs. Picked it up. The name of the book was The Complete Idiot's Guide to Starting Your Own Business. <laughs> that that just, it, it just, I think about it now and I'm like, <laughs> wow. It, just like God was speaking to me. <laughs> An idiot. And I and I opened that book, and that book taught me what a business plan was. And I walked out of prison at the age of 40. 40, and 40. With a, and all I had was $50 that the state of Texas had given me. I had my family. or uh, I had Jesus in my heart, and I had a dream. With no money, no no vehicle, no tools, zero. I started a remodeling business two months after my release. The last time I had gotten released, I put a needle in more. This time, I was uh, going to start my own business. And today, I am a very successful business owner, entrepreneur, CEO and founder of the Choose the Change Foundation, and author of this book, Dead Man Walking, The True Life Story of How I Went From Loser Drug Addict to International Speaker. Nice. And if I could do it, anybody can do it. And that's my message to everyone and anyone and everywhere I go. The life change is possible if you choose to. Mm -hmm. uh, um, my favorite mentor, Jim Rome, said, if you choose to you can change your life forever if you choose to you never have to be the same again and those were powerful words that i learned many many years ago and that's what took me from being a loser to being a winner from being um, a drug addict to being a business owner to being a nobody, to being a somebody, to being a loser father, to being a great father. That simple, just like that. And that's what I do, Anna. I live to help people. Really important. <laughs> yes, it is. It's too grounded. Nice. Um, so um, you mentioned Dead Man Walking, so that's the Orlando Salinas uh, story, and there is a link in the description to Orlando's book on Amazon. There's also a link to the Facebook group, uh, Believe in the Impossible, and there's also uh, links to uh, his uh, YouTube channels. Uh, so anyone wants to check those out, uh, the links are just in the description below. Yep. And, uh, and, uh, so, so do you have any, uh, you've worked with men, you've mentioned uh, working with men, and uh, uh, like, do you have any uh, success stories? Uh, you know, different men that that have come out of prison or have changed their lives, or yes, of course. There's a lot of men that I've been, that 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 I've been able to inspire and, and excuse me. And um, uh, God is good. That's right. Uh, and I, and uh, there's a lot of men that I've been able to inspire. And the truth is that 
uh, it's, changing your life is not easy. And everybody's mm -hmm. looking for solutions. Everybody. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for people to pick solutions because there are so many options that they have. And there are people, I believe that most people are confused in life today. L really, literally confused, especially men. Uh, but that's only my opinion. Uh, but talking about success stories, you know, I can talk about um, some of the men in, in our circles, in my circle, uh, John Andrew Zapata. John Andrew Zapata spent, went to prison twice, went to prison when he was 17, very young. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, well, one of, let me tell you this first. Um, that what I do in the Choose a Change Foundation, what I started doing is st I started going into the parole office. When people get out of prison in Texas, uh, they ha they're, they're put on parole. And what happens is they have to report every, every month at a parole office. And in these parole offices, uh, every month or every week, depending on how big the city is, uh, they have what they call orientations or new arrival orientations for all the new people coming out of prison. And I knew about this orientation because I went through it myself. And when I started my organization, I said to myself, I'm going to get into that orient. I'm going to go find out how to get in that orientation so I can share my story that I shared with you and so that I could uh, invite them to church and you know, hopefully they, you know, help them change their lives, right? But then, then I started a mentoring class where I would invite into my mentoring class. And this is where I met Frank. This is where I teach personal development. I teach personal change. This is where I inspire and challenge and equip men to help them change their lives, their habits, their attitudes, and help them understand how to do that. But I also go into the prison system which I go, I, I, now we haven't been gone since COVID, right? But we, we go into the prison every week and we're speaking to men in there. So uh, the reason I told you all that is because it, many men have not only come through the parole office, but they've also come out of prison. So the first story I want to tell you is John Andrew, John Andrew Zapata. Zapata was in the prison when I started going about eight years ago. And, and he heard my story and it, he just locked in because he wanted to change his life because I knew that there was people in prison, which is why I started this organization that were just like me. They messed up their lives. They were drug addicts. They, they, they went to a, to a place they never, and they thought that their life was over, that they can't change. And now they find themselves in prison. And I knew that there was men like me that in their minds, they, they don't, they don't know if they can change. They don't know if it's possible. But when they hear my story, they're like, man, it is possible. And sure enough, John Andrew Zapato was one of them. He heard my story. He said, when I get out, I'm going to that church, and I'm going to your mentoring class. And sure enough, he got out, started coming. Long story short, he's been in our church now six years. And uh, he got out of prison, came, got married, has two beautiful kids, three. Let me see. Three, yeah. Three, three kids now. Uh, he's faithfully serving in our church, has a job. He's, you know, he's, he's moving forward in life. He's only 20-something years old, maybe 30. And then we have uh, uh, Rudy. Rudy uh, Rudy started coming to our church uh, about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, something like that. Maybe 12, 15, I don't remember. But it's been a while. He was coming to our church. Uh, Rudy went to prison three times. Rudy mm -hmm. never had a legal job in his life. He was taught to... To sell drugs, that's all he knew. Never had a legal job in his life. And when he came to the church, he was like 32 years old. And three times to prison. And all he knew was how to sell drugs, and he was a drug addict. But he wanted to change his life. So he came. He gave his life to God, started to come to church. His first job was a dishwasher at a Chinese restaurant. He hated his job, but he wanted to change. And then, this is where I was telling you about opportunity, uh, Anna. He stayed, because this is what we, I teach people. You stay here long enough to keep on doing the right thing. And, and opportunity will come. Well, sure enough, he got a job as a broker, um, a truck, 18-wheelers. And he started learning that, that trade. He started learning that trade. Long story short, today he owns his own multi-million dollar business. Oh, wait, I, I skipped a... I skipped a a part. 
he started coming to choose to my mentor. And here I teach that you can do anything. You can grow. You can learn. You can. There's more in life if you just go and add it and get it. And he, he did it. And today he owns his own business. So yeah. we have Oscar Cruz. Oscar Cruz. He was also gotten uh, was in juvenile system since he was 13 years old. In out of juvenile system. By the time he was 18, he graduated to the to the adult prison. And then in prison, he got into gangs. He got you know. He, he lost his family. He just messed up his life. And the second time to the adult prison, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. He just said, man, I want to change my life. I don't. But again, he didn't know, believe that he, if it was possible for a man like him to change his life. He got out of prison. I went to the parole office. He heard my story. He called me up. Orlando, I want what you got, man. I want what you have. He came to prison. He came to the church. He's been coming to our church for about, well, for years now, I'm going to say about eight years. But the thing is, his family got restored about a year after he got out. He has another two children with his wife, and he's a pastor now. So those are just three quick stories from just in our church. And there's more. You know, I can talk about Danny Martinez. I can talk about um, Arnulfo, Chavarria, Frank. Um, who else? Who uh, else? It's just some they slip my mind, but there's plenty of people, and then those are just the ones that are in the church. And that's apart from the ones that just came and are now doing better, they're on their own. And so, there you go. Thank there you. you go. It's, it's <laughs> wonderful to hear that you've uh, gone around and been able to help so many people. And that's how I went to Washington, by the way, Anna, because I went to, I went to speak at some churches over there. Ah. I've had the privilege. I've had the privilege of, of going around the world. I've I've been to Australia, to New Zealand, to the Philippines, three times, um, uh, Romania, London, uh, uh, where else? Brazil, and all over the United States. So it's been amazing, amazing journey. Really neat to <laughs> hear. And now I'm just, you know, I mean, I'm learning how to do so many things, online things. I'm learning how to do what I do on Facebook and do what I do. On, you know, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning all this stuff. So pretty cool. Well, Very possible. I'm here. Oh, yeah. And uh, or, or, or like you said it before, you believe in impossible. And that's something that, you know, I came to believe also because of. When I when I came in, I mean, you uh, I mean, you said yourself about uh, about yourself that you were twisted. I mean, I was I was I was twisted. I mean, I thought it was I, I thought it was Wednesday, you know, because but in my mind I wanted to go change my life. I didn't know how what I was gonna do. I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but God provided a way, and I went in there yep. and I just needed guidance. And you're like you're like saying all the this stuff and. You, Shared your story. Having to um, say all you know, the right stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I went in, you know, broken. Like, like you're saying that you wanted to kill your your worthless self, and that was me. You know, I. Yeah. Uh, it was either kill myself or, or find another way. And. Yep. I found. And believing that I could do it, uh, so like, so I know you've helped me a lot. And like I said, this show is a part of part of that. Everything I do is like comes from that. Of course, uh, putting God first. You know, God put me there. And uh, you mentioned Rudy. Rudy is also the second in command of the Jesus Change Foundation. Yeah, he's he's the second second in charge. Yes. So he opens up and does a show. Hey, you've even done for me, uh, Frank. Yeah, you've even helped me with my mentoring class when I'm not there. Oh yeah, I've, and I've done it a couple of times, and uh, uh, you just did the I think it was the uh, the quest the five day quest uh, question and answer uh, mm -hmm. seminar. And I was able to 
Q and A, and I was able to be there uh, for I think for like three or four of the no, I think like three of those days. Mm -hmm. um, so for anyone uh, you know wanting to check that out, those are on uh, the private Facebook group, and there is a link here. They'll just uh, post it this up for me. Mm -hmm. So go on there. You can see all the videos, uh, all the all, all the live streams that uh, Orlando has done. There is another one, a, a a class tomorrow, but you can watch it live on on there on Facebook. Yeah, every Thursday I have a mentoring class. Uh, I, I, it's it's live on Facebook, and I'm teaching something to do with life change, success, business, something. Always something. It's um, it's, it's just a weekly mentoring. Everybody interested? Mm -hmm. It's free of charge. Excellent. So, and, uh, Anna, do you have any questions for for Lando? I mean, we still got plenty of time. So. Mm -hmm. I don't have questions written down, but I have a couple of notes. And, okay. Uh, one of them is just a uh, like a little reflection on your your stories of challenges, and and I think that. Sometimes we go through challenges in life so that we can help others get through their challenges and we can understand mm -hmm. what they're going through because I believe that everybody has something in life at some point that they go through that's yes, really... Everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you probably have a story, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's of course, some of us are, you know, gone through worse things than others, but I think you hit it on the nail there and I... Um, because one of the things that happens with people who have a hard time believing in God or, or blaming God um, is because, you know, we, this is how life works. For some reason, uh, some, some people have to go through things. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, one of the hardest things, one of the things people do is say, well, God's real. Why is so many bad things happening? But it's not God. It's just how life works. That's just how it works. Um, our job is not to figure it out. Uh, I heard it like this. When I heard it like this, it made a lot of sense. Uh, they said, listen, uh, in this universe, God already made the rules. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you can't change. When you go create your own universe, then you can make your own rules. <laughs> but in this rule, in this universe you're and when i looked at it from that perspective you know i can't question why things are the way they are you know i i can i can try to figure it out and i can live my whole life blaming the system blaming the creator blaming blame yeah. the earth blaming people uh, but the reality is it is what it is and you either have to accept it and, or reject it and we and it's designed so that we can learn and grow that's how it works you grow through your struggles it's just how it works it's like your plant um, you know you have to do certain things to them they need the rain they need the sun they need the 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 earth they need the water you know so there's some things in your life that you have to cultivate mm-hmm so that you can grow as a person, just like you do the plants. So if you don't, if if a hurricane comes and, or a bad weather comes and messes up all your plants, uh, you, you don't. Cr I mean, you don't like that. You don't. You know. You wish, but that's just how life works. No matter how good you take care of it. That makes sense. Yeah, and you. And, can that, and that's why bad things happen to good people. Because it's called life. Right. And you can take responsibility and that garden again. Or that, you can sit there and and uh, turn it into an excuse not to take action. Just yeah. telling yourself, oh, it might happen again. But yeah. really and, taking responsibility is a huge part of life. And guess what? You can make it better. Mm -hmm. Just like yeah. I do. Time you plant it. Yep. You can replant and make it better. That is so awesome. Better than it was. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome.
That's cool. Great I like that. Stuff. Make it better. Uh, no, see. but I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, you know, I know that you guys are always doing something, and you keep up, keep up the good work, keep encouraging each other, encouraging each other, and helping each other. And I don't know where all this is going to take you, but it has got to take you. It'll take us somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> And if yeah. it, uh, anyone, anyone's wondering what I was doing, I'm doing a sketch card of Orlando. What? No. So I was trying to do as best as I can just from doing it here. Uh, I think I, I smudged it a bit, so I'm going to fix that up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, well, I don't know if anyone is still in the chat. So anyone has any questions for Orlando? Uh, but, uh, if not, you can find Orlando on the choose to change foundation.com. You can find him in the Facebook group. Uh -huh. And uh, you can check out Dead Man Walking, the Orlando Salina story. On It's on uh, Amazon. And, uh, and I know you said this before, um, all the money that 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 comes in from the the book that goes to yeah the I don't choose make, change foundation goes to the choose to change foundation in fact i don't make I don't, I don't get paid for this by the way it's it all all my in fact i fund it <laughs> it's uh <laughs> you know everything i do is to help others mm -hmm. so what i wanted to share with you guys earlier i told you i was going to do something mm -hmm. i'm going to start doing something new this is the first time i share it in and, um, but what I'm going to do is I, I, I want to be able to build an online course um, to help raise money, not only for Choose a Change, but for, 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 for everything I do. So I, I wanted to build, a, I'm start, I started building a personal development course, which I'm still going to build for ex-convicts and anybody who wants to need a process to change their lives, right? Mm -hmm. Which I believe is a process. It's all a process. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm going to start uh, a, a doing some videos and building a course on how to start your own remodeling business, which is what oh. I have. I have a remodeling business. If you want to go to my, to my website, it's called cqrkitchenandbath.com. And if you just Google that, um, you'll see all our work and what I do. I have a very successful, um, as I mentioned earlier, Anna, I got out of, when I was 40, started my business. Well, that was 18 years ago, going on 18 years ago. From zero, from no tools, no product, no nothing, to today, um, uh, I have we have a whole crew of men. We build beautiful kitchens, custom work. I specialize in kitchens and bathrooms, and we're we're like uh, your home improvement show. All I need is a camera now, in front of me, <laughs> and, and when you see the pictures, you'll see what I mean. We do very very good work. So I want to teach people. There's a lot of people out there that can do this. They just don't know the process. I I, I learned the hard way, just figuring it out. How to you know when it comes to bidding? That's a big pro that's a big issue for people. They don't know how to bid jobs. They don't know how to price themselves. They don't know how to save money. They don't know how to pay themselves. They don't know how to find jobs. They don't know how to actually find a help somebody to help them. Uh, uh, there's a little things that you need to learn about marketing, about yourself, about what you need to do, finding customers. So that's. Uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. You got to start something like that for people that want to learn how to do that. Excellent. I want to check that out later. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah that sounds great. I'll be, you'll be hearing more about and, it. Uh, okay. <laughs> and for anyone wondering, like, why we had Orlando on, because this isn't, like, he's not an artist. He doesn't make comics. But, uh. He had a big part in what I do and what he does, is, and I named this show The Art of Motivation because uh, there is creativity 
in public speaking. There's a lot of creativity in in motivation and in what he does. I mean, I mean, you just heard a few things. He's coming up with a program for you know to to be a remodeler. He came up with the Choose Change Foundation. He wrote a book. Uh, so like uh, a lot of what he teaches and what I've learned uh, over over the years, just from uh, watching him and talk to him one on one, and Orlando has given me like plenty of chances when like I thought like you know like I wasn't sure like well uh, like I don't know where I'm gonna get uh, food today, and he was like, hey, let's go do a job. <laughs> so I was like, uh, <laughs> and I'll, I'll earn I'll earn uh, groceries and, and stuff like that, and but. Uh, I love what he teaches. I've applied it to, to uh, you know, making art, making comics, uh, uh, not just that, but like you know, improving myself, making a budget. Uh, you know, one of the things you you talk about a lot is uh, the mindset, and in in the art world, there's this thing called the imposter syndrome, where you think that mm-hmm. you're not good enough, or you don't, right, if you're you're making something like. Oh, like they're gonna find out that I, you know, I'm not that great or or whatever, and that's just the mindset. Um, that's mm-hmm. just like you know, what you're allowing in 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 your mind. And you know, one thing you you talked about, uh, you do talk about in it. And if anyone checks out the Facebook group, one of the uh, lessons he did in the uh, seminar is a uh, voices, the voices yep. in your mind. And a lot of it, it's, it's just self-talk, just like you talking to yourself, saying like, uh, "Oh, I can't do this," uh, or making excuses or, or or whatever. So like, uh, I encourage anyone who is uh, doubting their themselves as an artist, as a person, as a father, whatever business you you want to do, like check out the Choose to Change Foundation Facebook group, uh, watch the videos, you know, do all the stuff. So I mean, or even just. They, Right, or even just going to the website, choose a change foundation. That'll, yeah, that'll we, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Which we have it here because uh, Dell put put it up in the in the chats, and he also put up the CQR kitchen and bath. So if you want to check check that out, yes. if you are in the uh, the Rio Grande Valley area, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you, you can uh, you can uh, check that out and. Uh, and I just want to say uh, thank you, Orlando, because uh, I mean, uh, you've you've uh, helped me, you've inspired me. Uh, so, like, uh, thank you for everything that that, that you've done. Awesome. What- yeah, I'm really thankful to have been able to meet you today on this live stream. Yeah, Anna, I heard a lot about you, Anna. Oh, really? You guys are from going- who? <laughs> Oh well, well, uh-huh. what I mean is, he doesn't. Frank doesn't say talk about you bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just, I just knew that you guys were doing uh, this um, uh, show, so mm-hmm. that that was really good. I like that. I'm excited to see where you guys are gonna go. Thank you. Um, gonna, yeah. you're gonna, gonna do this. Gonna do this. Right. There you we're go. go- <laughs> we're going to the top. That's right. Well, listen, guys, I'm gonna have to let you go. All right. Well, we're right at the one minute till the hour. Yeah. Mark, so no way. What time is it? Yeah. Minutes? Yeah, what? we're 53 <laughs> minutes in, so we're about to wrap it up. So, like, yeah, you you need to go. I uh, we're going, man. See, I told you I can talk like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> No, thank you for 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 having me. I really appreciate the, uh, the invite, and you know, hopefully, uh, we can still come back, come back, tell more stories. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, that'll be great. It was great to have you. So yeah, for joining us. No, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Frank. And um, I guess I'll take off. All right. That, that sounds good. All thank right. But we'll see you guys. God bless you. Bye. God bless you. God bless. All right. So that uh, that was Orlando Salinas, and uh, 
founder and CEO of the Choose to Change Foundation and CQR Kitchen and Bath. Uh, we still got a, a few minutes. I mean, we can still talk amongst ourselves. If anyone wants, got any suggestions, uh, but uh, uh, check out all his stuff. Uh, all the the links, everything is in the description below. I didn't make any banners today. I got home and like I was just I forgot to make the banners. So, <laughs> but uh, hey, try to create pests. Mm hmm. Yeah, and even, right, so, though, oh, you're, even though yeah. Orlando doesn't do like painting or singing or things like that, he's definitely still a creative individual finding creative solutions to get through life. And oh, yeah. Out. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like uh, he's got, like you say, like right now he... Uh, because of the pandemic, he can't go into the prisons, but he's gone in there. He's taken uh, bands, which are like uh, uh, groups from, from our church, like organize this whole event. So like uh, now he's like doing it more online. So like, that's, uh, that's good that, 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 you know, we're actually able to, uh, well, I mean, I, I, I see it all, all the time, but like, like I can actually share stuff like that with you, like send you a link or so. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think Dale is still. I don't know if Dale's still in the chats. But, uh, cool. I mean, what? I mean, is there anything from his story that uh, that like stuck out to you, or anything that you liked, or making the choice to uh, really make the move on your own utilizing the opportunities that come at you rather than looking past them and saying oh that's impossible i'm too far gone i can't change and so instead taking self-responsibility and turning your life around that's right that's right <laughs> yeah and uh i i guess we'll we're, yeah, we're already at, at the mark, so we, we usually don't have a guest leave uh, before that, so. <laughs> well, it's 9.03, so it's like if we had started on the clock, it'd be three minutes over time. Yeah, because we did start a little late, and that was my fault. Um, I forgot to make make it public, so I was doing that and checking. But, uh... Oh. Hey. Uh I'm working on something. Nice. A couple uh, work in progress mask things. Cool. And uh, I guess we'll just use this time to take up our, our progress quickly. Sure. So I just made uh I made all these copies of the mini comics. So it is done. It is ready. If uh anyone want, anyone wants a copy of this, you can hit me up on my uh on my PayPal. You can DM me. Hit me up on my PayPal, and I think for uh uh like two bucks, I'll send this out to you. Uh, you can have your own copy. And on the back, and so some of these do have this on the back, some don't. But uh, if you request them over the back, I, I, I will uh, I will send it out to you. So it has that pinup. Uh, so, which I have an example here. Like I, have the, I showed it last time, but it's an actual copy and not like. Mm-hmm. Cool. Fold out. Oh yeah. And uh how far along are you on your 100 days of making comics? I'm on like 32, I think. Is I think. it 32? I thought it was still 31. I think I just might have finished 31. I'm not quite sure. I don't think I've done 32 yet though. Okay, so it'll it's coming up. Yeah, I think. 
Today is day 25 for me. Uh, I haven't done that much except made uh, copies of this, but I did. Uh, I was sketching out a uh, some thumbnails for for a different comic. So so I started that today. Uh, mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah. I've got some thumbnail <laughs> sketching to do real soon. I'm rewriting a few pages that I've been working on. Cool. Yeah, and I've been I've been seeing the all the progress on on the blog. Uh, anyone watching this, uh, there is a a link tree to Anna Rob, uh, and she has a blog there where she updates uh, everything that she's doing for the Wonders of Making Comics. So, mm -hmm. just seeing all that that work, the uh, all the the, the progress, uh, uh, drawings and everything, all the sketches, all the uh, works in progress. I mean that's. It's uh it's fantastic to watch. So uh, thank you. Check it out, guys. Yeah, the other and... day. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say the other day I made my blog post before midnight and I was like, Yay, I made it before midnight. And then immediately after I posted it, the power went out. And I was like, Oh, that's why I finished it before midnight. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I think that's it for for tonight. Uh, thanks to everyone who who popped in the chats, everyone watching this on the replay. Uh, leave a comment, leave a like, share this out. Uh, having Orlando was one of my my goals because he is uh, my my mentor. I know him uh, personally, so I wanted to have him on the show. So I was a little bit of, a little bit nervous having him on, even though I talked to him all the time. <laughs> Uh, I hope I hope you all liked it. You can find my stuff on my link tree. There is a a, uh, a link in the description below. Uh, let me pull up the banner real quick. You know what? You can just go to the Toronto Creative Cast link tree. You can find my stuff. You can find Anna's stuff. And uh, remember, guys, you can't spell Toronto without A R T. So <laughs> makes sense. Uh, yeah, I wonder who came up with that. <laughs> you have any uh, last words for our for our, the two rocketeers? Thanks for watching and joining us today, and all the people who might watch it in the future. <laughs> all right, and we are out. And shall we end with a, the Turaco call? <laughs> okay. All right. Go away! Go away. <laughs>